Hi, my name is Lauren DiStefano. I am a freshman majoring in animal sciences, and I am honored to be a part of the Ignite program, which places incoming freshmen with a professor in their major to assist in the professor's ongoing research. The research project I have been actively working on asks the question, what are the effects of feeding rumen protected lysine during the transition period on the uterine morphology of Holstein cows? What led us to ask this question is the uterine inflammation dairy cows experience during the transition period. The transition period is the time when a dairy cow transitions from a non-lactating to a lactating state, defined as three weeks before and three weeks after calving. Due to these physiological changes, she is at an elevated risk of contracting diseases and developing metabolic and immunological disorders. We hypothesize that by providing a more well-balanced diet, which incorporates lysine, a known limiting essential amino acid for Holstein cows, we should see an alleviation of negative effects at the cellular level. To test this hypothesis, we assigned 53 multiparous Holstein cows, or cows which have calved before, to one of four diets. As you can see in Table 1, we used a crossover method to create four dietary treatments. LL, where lysine is fed both pre- and postpartum. LC, where lysine is fed prepartum but not postpartum. CL, where lysine is not fed prepartum but is fed postpartum. And CC, our control where lysine is neither fed pre- nor postpartum. The cows consumed the first part of their treatment 28 days before calving and the second part of their treatment until 28 days relative to calving. Using a biopsy instrument, endometrial samples were extracted from the body of the uterus. Once brought to the dairy focus lab, they were stained with hematoxylin to turn the nuclei of the cells purple and eosin to turn the cytoplasm of the tissue pink. The slides were then scanned, labeled by cow, and captured using NDPView software for further evaluation. Using ImageJ software, I calculated the total glandular area and perimeter, the glandular epithelial heights, the number of cells per gland, and the number of glands per tissue. Figure 2B depicts one gland captured from cow 47, which, in figure 2A, exists as one of these small circular structures in the mucus excretion tract in the endometrial tissue. In figure 2b, the black circle encompasses one gland, the black arrow points to one nucleus, and the bracket indicates how the epithelial height of one cell was measured. The data was analyzed using the mixed procedure in SAS. P-values less than 0.05 were considered significant, and p-values between 0.05 and 0.10 were considered a tendency. The results from our study concluded that the treatment had no significant effects on the uterine morphology of Holstein cows, as indicated by the lack of a p-value less than 0.05 in Table 2. There was no treatment effect on the number of uterine glands, nor the area or perimeter. There was, however, a tendency for a treatment effect on both the number of cells per gland and the average glandular epithelial heights. As depicted in Figure 3a, cows which received rumen-protected lysine in their diets postpartum expressed a greater number of cells per gland than cows which did not receive lysine postpartum, 68.43 cells compared to 55.15 cells respectively. This suggests that cows which received lysine postpartum experienced less inflammation, and their cells were therefore able to naturally proliferate. In Figure 3b, we can see that cows which did not receive rumen-protected lysine postpartum express a greater average glandular epithelial height than cows which did receive lysine postpartum, 8.44 micrometers compared to 7.90 micrometers, respectively. While we do not have the exact answer as to why cows which did not receive lysine postpartum have greater cell heights, we hypothesize that the cells had to increase their size in order to produce the same amount of glandular excretions as the cells from the cows which did receive lysine. In conclusion, we have found that feeding rumen-protected lysine to cows during the transition period alters their uterine morphology, and supplementing a dairy cow's diet with this essential amino acid may improve uterine recovery.